Okay, my people, how are you? Don Bernard Jr. with a very special guest. Why don't you let the people know who you are? Hi, my name is Pat Saul. I am a therapist and I am helping Jed Rosen present uh, the forgiveness workshops here at Bangs in Montclair. And we're having a good time doing it. Oh, it's been awesome. I mean, I've been learning so much about forgiveness. You know, it's, um, it's a practice that I realized I, I wasn't taken seriously. Yeah. You know, and I think people really should take it more seriously. So uh, my question to you is, you know, I think about forgiving yourself and how difficult that is. Why do you think it's so difficult for people to do? Um, I think people get hung up on just holding on to the anger because that's the only way that they can really be connected to the other person. Wow. So it's more about staying attached to that person. It's all about attachment. Wow. And people don't want to experience the pain of non-attachment. Mm -hmm. So if the anger seals them in to whoever it is, mm -hmm. then they feel that that at least is a relationship they can hold on to, even if it's an anger. I always felt it was more to do with not wanting to uh, see yourself, like not wanting to, you know. That's true. So it's a learning process, you know, we're learning about this, um, right. you know, what it is to truly forgive yourself. I guess it's all those different kind of levels too, right. not wanting to put the mirror up to yourself as well, right? Exactly. And some yeah. people will take, you know, go to great extents to cover the mirror mm. so that they don't have to even face themselves. Yeah. And I think covering the mirror, in the end, the person actually is cheating themselves because yeah. holding on to grudges only leads to an, an, a, bit, a very bitter older life. There's yeah. no other place for that energy to go. And it is energy. Yeah. So if people, I mean, I was fortunate. Look, I grew up in a family of 10. Wow. There was no time to hold on to your anger. So you're saying you had 10 brothers and sisters. I have one, I'm one of eight kids and my wow. parents. Wow. So, and I was the middle. So wow, in the middle. You yeah. couldn't, if you had a fight with your brother, which always was my case, <laughs> <laughs> and I always lost, um, there was no time to hold on to that. Life mm. moves too fast in a large wow. family. Wow, that's interesting. And so you had to sort of just like release it, let go and yeah. move on. And hopefully the next time you came in contact with that sibling, it was a more positive experience. And generally it was, yeah. if you were able to let go. See, it was different for me because I was uh, the only child. So I think, because I, I do feel like I hold on to stuff pretty well. And maybe it's because I wasn't a part of a big family. Right, right. Yeah, wow. So, so that actually- That's interesting. Don, that actually reinforces the idea that of attachment. That yeah. a lot of it has to do with attachment. With attachment, yeah. And we hold on to those feelings so we can yeah. feel attached to others. Yeah. But it's a facade. I mean, it's not really totally. a true relationship whatsoever. Because yeah. there isn't that general going back and forth and saying, hey, this is how, how I feel when you did this and vice versa. Yeah. There's no working out of the process. Got you. Um, one last thing I wanted to bring up uh, is to me, in connection with forgiveness and forgiving yourself, is this uh, idea we have to be perfect. Mm. You know, why do you think people feel they need to be perfect all the time? Um, that's a great question. I think some of it right now is very cultural. It's cultural. Uh, the push to be perfect or to. So you're saying in different cultures, like in, I don't know, Europe or South America, you think it's different? Um, yeah. Yeah, because I think it I has I think it has to do with life priorities and what's important. Uh -huh. So if you go to Europe, taking your siesta and having your big meal in the yeah. afternoon, that's important, and family circles around that, and therefore relationships circle around that. Mm -hmm. But here in the states, and especially so influenced by uh, multimedia, yeah. the, the the drive. I mean, look at anorexia. The drive wow. for people towards perfections is so high that yeah. it overrides any other priority. Wow. You know, if we had our priorities straight where family was first. Yeah. I mean, look how fa many families just dis completely eliminate family dinner. Yeah. Every single night. Totally. And yet 20 years ago, mm -hmm. it, it was very much in, you know, in practice. It was very much in force. So what changed in the last 20 years? Why have we become more yeah. individualized? Um, 
two, I think there are two things that I can think of. One is there's not enough, enough eyes at home. Not and what I eyes. mean by that is when both parents are out working and they're uh -huh. exhausted at the end of the day, yeah. unless there's a third partner, and in you know, a million years ago we would use the grandparents for that. Right, partner. yeah. Unless there's a grandparent or an aunt or someone who's invested in the family emotionally, yeah. is in the house watching what's going on with the children. Mm -hmm. So that's one factor. And I think the other factor is the lack of face-to-face -face communication. Like this. Like right. people don't do this anymore. Because it's about texting and right. Facebook and all that stuff. Right. So there, yeah. hey, there you can be attached to someone. Yeah. Think of the forgiveness in that. You can be attached to someone, but really it's you're not attached to them at all. Mm -hmm. You're only attached to words that are sort of made up in the moment. Yeah. Um, it's a full step away from even a telephone conversation. Right, yeah. So totally. we're, we're faking ourselves out wow. and we're faking our children out mm. in terms of really building true relationships and knowing what it's like yeah. to relate to each other. Well, it seems like the key for us then is communication, real connection, you know, face to face, not just, I mean, I love Facebook, I love Twitter. These are uh, great devices in today's multimedia and for us to do business and connect with people all over the world. But it seems very important, um, I'm hearing from you, is to uh, have that face-to-face, -face, you know. Not just use the camera, but come face-to-face -face what we're doing. Right. So that Absolutely. seems really important. So with that, that's Excellent. what it is. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Pleasure. Peace out, y'all.